Welcome back, friends. It's Mimi with Kids Stories and More. We're here for another What Would You Do? And all these are scenarios from this book, What Would You Do? A Kid's Guide to Tricky and Sticky Situations. These are important conversations to have with your parents, with your teachers, and let's get right into it. Now, the last time we had done things on the way to or from school, the time before that, in part one, we had done things from home. These are things when you're out on your own. So maybe you're a little bit older now. Maybe you're later elementary school, middle school. Lost in a store. One afternoon, your dad takes you to the supermarket. Somehow, you become separated from him. Anxiously, you look up and down the aisles, but you can't find him anywhere. What do you do? Now, honestly, this is, uh, this is a scenario for any child. Um, whether they're young, old, or older. Um, it's scary. Let's be honest, it's a scary situation for both parent, who's frantic, oh my goodness, what happened to my baby, and to the child who's, wait, I, I, I was just excited about this new cereal or this candy bar, and I look up and mom's in another aisle, or dad, dad's no longer in the aisle with me. What do I do? Well, what do you think you should do? Okay, I'm hearing some good ideas. Now, first thing you should do, never, ever, ever leave that store. Doesn't matter if it's grocery store, uh, Hobby Lobby, Costco, whatever store you're in, you do not leave that store because your parent is going to be looking for you. And if you leave the store, you might get lost. Uh, even for, you're going to get lost even further. So you want to stay in the store. Now, what you should do is go to an employee there, whether it's a cashier, a security guard, someone at the meat counter, if you're in the grocery store that's stocking the produce, you know, usually these people will be wearing um, a shirt with the logo of the, the grocery store or whatever store you're in, Target, a clothing store. Um, if you're not sure if they work there, you could just say, do you work here? Um, and tell them exactly what happened and make sure when you're telling them, I got separated from my dad, his name is, and you need to be sure that you explain, that you pronounce the name carefully and slowly so they can make out what you're saying. If you're, as I know, it would be a scary thing. Oh my goodness. I got separated from my dad. Blah, 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 blah. And all they're hearing is blah, 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 blah. they can't make out what you're saying. So you need to take a breath, take a deep breath, say, okay, I got separated from my dad. His name is John Smith. You know, say it very clearly. So that way that employee can have your parent paged. Most stores will have an announcement, a pager system where they can say, um, John Smith, please come to customer service. We have your son or daughter, um, and they will know to meet you over there. Chances are your parent will probably ask to have you paged. So you're going to want to listen for that as well and where to, to meet you. Now let's say you cannot find someone that works there. Okay. Uh, especially nowadays there's, you know, uh, the, the, not many people, uh, are coming into work and there may not be, or maybe they're just all swamped and it's holiday time and they don't even have a moment to be on the floor. What you can do is go up to, if you see a mom or a dad with a younger child, so you know that they're a parent, maybe they're pushing a stroller. They got the kid in the cart go up to them and say, oh, I got separated from my parent. Can you please help me? I need someone to page my dad. I am sure they will help you find your parent. Always look for another parent. They got your back. Okay. <coughs> Pardon me. And make sure whether you're with, you've, they'll help you find, um, someone that works there or get the message out you stay with that person until your parent meets you. So if you went up to the cashier and said, can you please have John Smith page? That's my dad. You stay with that cashier until John Smith or the manager or whoever it is until they come claim you don't go wandering off in another aisle. 
and please make sure you thank them for helping you find your parent. Here's another situation that may come up. Getting stuck in an elevator. Hi, hey, 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 hey. this is a big fear of mine. That's one of my big phobias. You go visit your grandparents and while you're riding an elevator to the fifth floor apartment, it becomes stuck between floors. Much to your dismay, you're alone in the car. Well, what can you do? If you have your phone on you, that might be helpful. But if you don't, if you don't have a cell phone or even sometimes in elevators, that cell phone service is not working. What can you do? Well, wait a minute. It might, you know, the, the elevator might start working again. If you've waited a moment and it's still not moving, what you can do is press, you'll see um, there's close and open buttons. The close buttons are usually uh, have, it's a button and it has two arrows pointing in. The open buttons are the ones with the arrows pointing out. Hit the close button and then try pressing the floor number again. Sometimes that can get the elevator to move again. If that doesn't work, hit the emergency button. The emergency button is usually a red button or it may have like a bell on it. And that should, um, will uh, set off an alarm and let anyone monitoring the elevator know as well as other people that there's someone on there and the elevator is not working and they can call for help. If for some reason the emergency bell doesn't work or there isn't an emergency bell, you've tried the close and pressing the floor buttons and nothing is working, start banging on the walls, on the floor, screaming, tapping, whatever you can to get someone's attention. Eventually somebody will be coming by, press the towards the elevator, they'll hear you and they'll call for help. Those are some tips for you. Now, the next one, is um, something that we have happen here and there, unfortunately, bullying, bullying. <sighs> You're standing in line to buy tickets for a movie. An older kid walks up and asks if he may cut in front of you. When you say no, he calls you names and pushes you around. What do you do? What would you do? Well, bullying, whether it's online, at the movie theater, in school, anywhere, is never good. But there are things you can try. What are they? Well, first off, don't call him or her names and push them back, because that's just two wrongs. <laughs> Do not make a right. Okay, that's not going to solve the situation. That's just going to exacerbate it more. Without saying what you plan to do, leave the line and go to the theater box, office, or lobby and explain the situation to them. Just walk away and tell them what happened online. Maybe they can ha help handle the situation because that's not okay for anyone to be pushing you around, calling you names for no reason. Find a, t uh, find a theater employee, a ticket seller, a ticket taker, an usher, or a manager. Again, explain what happened and describe the person who pushed you because they shouldn't be allowed in that theater because they could be doing that to someone else, whether on the concession line or just pushing around some other kid and that's not okay. If the theater employee does nothing, you can either go to the end of the line or ask to use the telephone. Or if you have your own phone, of course, you can use that as well. Call home, explain the situation to your parents and make arrangements to leave the theater without buying a ticket or seeing the movie. You know what? You can go another day. You don't want to be around because heavens forbid you and you go to the same, you end up at the same movie, then you have to deal with that person in the theater as well. And that's not okay. Life is too short and you know, it, it, there's no reason for you to have to um, put up and listen to somebody berating you, making fun of you, be the bigger person. And, and I know that might be hard and you feel that you should be the one, that they should be the one to leave, but it's not worth possibly getting hurt for. Now, your parents might have a different uh, idea of how to handle that, it might be different in school. 
Um, there's different ways of handling things. Now, this is someone you don't know. Um, now, if it was you were being bullied by someone you do know that maybe you're in school with and that's happening over and over and over again, definitely get your parents involved. They should be reaching out to the teacher or to the principal if, uh, if talking to the teacher is not helping, to a counselor at school, and explain the situation and get that handled the proper way. Now, me personally, and I'm not giving advice to anybody, to anyone to, to ever, you know, um, fight. But for my children, what I've told them is, one, you don't engage. Two, you don't fight back. Reach out, like I said, to a teacher, to a counselor, to the nurse, any staff member at school. If this is happening at school and it's someone that's repeatedly, you know them, they're in your class. If and obviously tell your parents, they've reached out to the principal, the superintendent, whatever. I'm not gonna let my child be bullied. And this is me personally. You talk to your parents about what is good for you. But if the same person is bullying you over and over again, you need to at some point stand up for yourself. And that's what I would tell my child, don't take it. We've talked to the parents. Uh, we've had a sit down with those, the parents of the other child. We've talked to the principal, we've talked to the teacher. Nothing's getting done. Then, then I would give my okay to my child to talk back, stand up for themselves, push back, whatever it is. Now, I'm not telling anyone to get in trouble and get suspended and get de detention, but this is what I would tell my child. You need to discuss with your parents what they feel is appropriate for you and how you should handle any situation. I hope this brings up great points for you. I hope that you as a family discuss this and what you would like your child or children to do in situations similar to this. Hopefully you never encounter them, but you know, as time goes on, some of these might be, you know, situations you're encountering and you're going to want to know how to handle it. Well, this is Mimi from Kids Stories and More. Keep having those conversations and I'll see you next week for more activities. Bye-bye.